in 1 Peter chapter 5, and look with me, if you will, verse number 7. The Bible says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You know why we can cast our care upon him? Because he cares. A lot of people you can tell your troubles to, and they may act like they care, but their actions speak differently. But one thing about God, you can tell him all of your heartaches, all of your troubles, all of your problems and trials, and he just said to God that cares. He's a God that gets involved in our situations. Aren't you glad about that? Look with me now, verse number 8. says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. I'll go ahead and tell you this, and this didn't have anything to do with the message, but I just had this in my heart. Anything that you ever experience and I experience in life, somebody's already went through it. And I can promise you this on the authority of this word, if God leads you and I to it, he will take us through it. And if we'll let him, as Brother Jordan so well taught this morning, we'll be able to get over it. Some things in life have an impact on us in such a way that if we allow them, they will hurt us and harm us spiritually the rest of our lives. But I'm going to tell you, this, this is an infomercial, okay? The Lord said, the Bible says that Jesus come that you and I might have life. Say amen right there. But not just any kind of life. He said, and a life more abundant. He wants you and I to enjoy the trip. Listen, there's going to be some bad days. There's going to be some trying times. There's going to be some heartaches, some valleys and storms in life. But God fully intends, if we'll let him, to enjoy the trip. And I'm learning how to do that little by little and bit by bit, so you stay with me. All right, look if you will back in verse 8. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as the roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, here in this verse, we find the Apostle Peter, he instructs the people of God, first of all, to be sober, which by definition means to be mentally self-controlled. It implies the thought of a mind that is free from the distractions of the world and is focused upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what's going to make this a great meeting this week. We get focused on Jesus. Yeah. See, it's all about Him. Right. It's not about us. It's about Him. Yeah. He's allowing us to gather together on this Sunday morning in spirit and truth for one purpose and one reason, that is to exalt Him and worship Him. Yeah. Then not only does Peter instruct us to be sober, but he also tells you and I to be vigilant, which that literally means to be awake, to be alert, to be attentive uh, to everything that's going on around us and our surroundings. But why? Why is that a necessity? Why is it a necessity for God's people to be sober and to be vigilant, to be awake, to be alert, to be attentive of everything going on around us? Why is that so? Well, Peter answers it. In verse number 8, he says, The reason we are to be sober and vigilant because we have an adversary. The devil who walketh about as a roaring lion. Now, listen, I don't need to tell you, you already know this. If you're saved this morning, washed in the blood of the Lamb of God, you know you have an enemy. And it's not your brother or sister. It's not the one beside you, behind you, or in front of you. Mine and your adversary is the devil. Peter refers to him in this passage again as being a roaring lion, one that walketh about, and he has a purpose. He's seeking whom he may devour. So with that in mind, I want to preach for a few minutes, the Lord be my helper this morning, on how do you survive a lion attack? 
I'll go ahead and tell you, some of you have already experienced an attack of the adversary this week. It was acknowledged this morning by many. And if you haven't, you might as well buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> Hang on. Batten down the hatches. Because when God gets to moving, when God gets to blessing, the devil gets to stirring. He gets mad. He gets to battling. But I want to go ahead and serve notice this morning. Greater is he that's in you and I than he that's in this world. <laughs> Number, notice with me, number one, how do you survive? How do you get through? What are some of the attributes of our adversary, the devil? Notice, if you will, number one in verse number eight, we find that he roars loud. Yeah. He got a loud cry. Peter says he's a roaring lion. There's a couple of reasons as, as, as to why uh, the lion roars loud. Number one, he wants to distract his victim. He wants to get them distracted. He wants to get you and I, get a, catch us off guard. He wants to get you and I to that point that we get plumb, oh, if you will, taken away from what God has for us. He wants you and I to get discouraged, if you will, and get distracted. His roar catches, catches you and I off guard. And when we least expect it, that's when he roars. Notice something else. Not only do we find that he roars, he wants to distract his victim, but he also wants to deafen his prey. You see, when a lion roars, his desire literally is to paralyze his victim. He wants to get that individual to the point that you can't hear the voice of somebody warning you that you're about to be attacked. Uh, we find this morning his roar is loud. But notice something else with me. Not only is his roar loud, but we also find this morning that he's running loose. Peter said he walketh about. In other words, he's not in a cage. That's really deep, isn't it? He's not caged up. He's untamed. He's running wild. Notice something else. He's not bound by a chain. Job said in chapter 1, verse number 7, the Lord asked Satan, he said, Whence comest thou? Uh, to which Satan replied, From going to and fro in the earth and walking about up and down it. I mean, he's not caged. He's not on a chain. Now I'll tell you something else about him. He doesn't care. He's running loose and he's running wild and he doesn't care. I'll tell you one thing this morning for sure and for certain, certain he's out to deceive every sinner that he possibly can. Let me tell you, if you're here this morning under the sound of my voice and you're lost and don't know Christ is your Savior, the God of this world, little G, has blinded the minds of men lest the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. The devil wants to keep you blinded and keep you bound and keep you chained in your sin. Not only do we find that he roars loud and he's running loose, but he's also relentless in his looking. Yeah. He don't give up. Right. He's one of those drive-bys. If he doesn't get you the first time, he'll come again and get you to try and get you the second time. He is relentless in his pursuit. Notice again what Peter says, verse 8. He says, He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Tell you something about a lion. A lion's a proud animal. He's majestic, if you will. He's king of the jungle. He's full of pride. And so is the devil. That's why he got kicked out of heaven. He got lifted up and full of pride, and God done away with him. Lion's also a patient animal. <laughs> he stalks his prey. I mean, he watches his prey, and at the right moment, he attacks. He often seeks those who are weak and weary. But I'm going to tell you the main objective of a lion is to find a prey out there that's been wounded. He'll go after that wounded animal first. I'm going to go ahead and tell you if you're here this morning, you've got some kind of a wound in your heart, a wound in your life, and you're letting it fester up. I promise you this, you are a prime candidate for an attack from the lion. Mm. Devil's not a figment of mine in your imagination. He's not a fairy tale character. He's a real being. 
Now, I'll go ahead and tell you this. You already know it, I'm sure, but he would love to destroy everything that God has established right here in the church and in your lives and my life individually if you and I let him come in and attack us and grab hold of us and get a toehold. I'm truly thrilled and excited about what the Lord's doing around here. I said that a while ago. I mean, I am. I'm, I am just beyond measure looking so far to this. I've been so nervous. I mean, I've, all I can explain is a nervous excitement about what God's doing in the church and what God wants to do. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, there's one that's not. Right. He's not nervously excited. He's not a fanatic for the things of God. But I'll tell you what, he's our adversary. He's the devil. He's a roaring lion that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't like people getting saved. He don't like the atmosphere in the church. He doesn't like God's blessings upon many lives. He doesn't like seeing God touch people and help people and, and give them strength and give them courage and, and give them that which they need to sustain them in the walk of life. He doesn't like any of that. He surely doesn't like, again, seeing people get saved, get right with God. So that said, look again with me, verse number 8. He said, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil has a roaring lion. Peter uses the analogy and comparison of our adversary, the devil, to that of a roaring lion. I kind of pondered that thought for a little while. Why a roaring lion? Well, experts tell us that, they, that one thing that would heighten the probability of survival if a lion were attacked on a one-in-one -one confrontation with an individual is that lion loves to find you in his natural habitat. Yep. And remember, he's walking about to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. I found five things, don't let that scare you, five things that animal experts all agree that can be applied to you and I spiritually. Five things that, that will protect an individual that's being attacked by a lion in that lion's natural habitat. And I want you to notice this. First of all, these animal experts, these zoologists, you know Jack Hanna and that crowd. I mean, you know Jack Hanna. Yeah. Wild Kingdom. Marlon Perkins. Yeah, we're going way back. This is what they said. This is what they said now on how to survive a, a lion, a, a animal attack a, from a lion. First of all, they said, stay close to your guide. If you're out in that natural habitat, you're going about your activity. And they said, if a lion's about to pounce and attack, they said, first thing you do is stay close to your guide. Matter of fact, they said 95% of every human and line confrontation would end up in a human fatality. It could have been prevented if that person had simply stayed with and listened to their guide. You know what a guide is? A guide is somebody that leads. A guide is somebody that directs. A guide is somebody that knows where they're going. Let me say this. There's a double application right there. I want to start off by saying God's given Emmanuel Baptist Church, our pastor, what a great guide he's given us. Yes. Praise God, he knows where, to, where God intends to take the church. He knows the way God's wanting to take it. It's up to him to reprove and rebuke and exhort with long suffering. But it's up to you and I to hear, to listen, and to apply it to our lives, to heed it, and to follow the guide. Just stay close to the guide. Let me say this, you may not always agree with him. Now listen, I'm from, I'm from the deep south. But, and I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I've been here enough to know, y'all already know that. But I do know this. If you'll just follow him, if you'll listen to him, he's, listen, he loves every one of us. He cares for us. 
He's following God. If he, as he follows the Lord, we ought to follow him. And if we don't follow him, then I'm telling you, we set ourselves up to, uh, for an attack of the line for the devil to step in our lives. Just stay close to your guy. Amen. Another application, stay close to the Lord. See, like I said, all this, this meeting, it's all about him. It's all about what he's done. I tell you, I'm so glad to be a part of it. I'm so thrilled. I'm about ready to run out the door myself. Hey, God's done turned the tub of honey over in in the gable into my soul. And I'm telling you, God's wanting to do something, but you better look out. Better beware. You better be on guard. Because we got an adversary, the devil. Notice, the, they said there was experts saying we need to stay with our guy. Number two, they said when, when a, a lion attacks, not just stay with your guy, but you got to stand your ground. Good. Good. See, that lion can sense fear. He can smell it. Yeah. Really, that's what he wants to do. He wants to strike fear in the heart of his prey. He wants you and I to run. I'll go ahead and tell you the world, the flesh, and the devil wants you and I to run in the time of adversity. But it's high time that God's people took a stand. We're way overdue. Oh, listen, I like what the pastor said. All lives matter. Red, yellow, black, and white. All are precious in his sight. Listen, young and old and rich and poor. Every life matters. Jesus come to whosoever will. Us she could be saved, could get in the family of God. I'm glad to be numbered among one of them. Count me in. Old brother Jordan taught that lesson. If you could see what I see, what I've seen, he said, just get in or get out. I'm glad 1980 on a Wednesday night, I decided to get in. Oh God, the Holy Ghost came to where I was, opened my blinded eyes, and I got in. Yeah. Hey, I tell you, ever since then, there's been times when the devil's attacked. There's been days when he stuck his head up and came when I least expected it. But I'll be honest with you, to God be all the glory, I just stood the best I could. Yeah. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hey, Paul said when you've done all to stand, just stand. Just stand. Stand your ground. Hey, we got every reason. I'm not going to back down from that, uh, that crowd. I'm just going to stand my ground. And I'm going to stand it in love. That don't mean you got to be a redneck from Kentucky or South Carolina. You can stand your ground in love. Oh, Brother Christian, he's an officer. He has to stand his ground every day. And he could probably get rough with you. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I got saved. He could probably get rough. And he has to stand his ground. But I promise you this, he holds it together. I believe that. That's what God wants you and I to do is hold it together. And I'm trying every day of my life to learn how to hold it together a little bit better bit by bit. Oh, but the experts tell us if you're going to survive an attack from the line, you better stay close to the guide. You better stand your ground. And then they also said, raise your hands and shout just as loud as possible. Good. Yeah. Good. Devil don't like good praise and worship. And I ain't talking about having a team up here agging it on. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost uh, breathing through and moving upon a, a congregation of people or in your life individually and you just take time uh, to give God the glory and uh, get out your truck at the stoplight and run around and shout glory to God. Hey, I mean be going down the road and praising God for who He is and what He's done and what He wants to do and what He's going to do. <laughs> oh, my soul. See, when you raise your hand and you shout, and listen, I know some of you, y'all real reserved. I mean, you're really reserved. I mean, I understand that. I mean, Lord just saved you forever. I mean, He just forgave. Do you realize when you get to the, to the judgment seat, it ain't going to be a matter of whether or not you saved? You ain't going to have to, we've we got enough thanks for since we've been saved. 
But I mean, listen, he didn't have to save you. Right. He didn't have to write your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. He didn't have to give you a home in heaven. Yeah. He didn't have to lead, lead you to one of the greatest churches in America right here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. But you know what he did? So every night again, you ought to just get a good case of the old cares and just raise your hands and say glory to God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Yeah. Some of you ladies just need to shout your hair down. Yeah, good. Or shout it up, whichever one you need to do. And some of you men just need to get a good case of the don't cares. And saying, Ag the pro I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like somebody saying amen. Yeah. When the preacher's preaching, yeah. saying glory to God. You know what that does to a man of God? Yeah. It acts him on. Yeah. You talking about a 30 minute message might run into an hour. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that. Won't nobody act now. But has it ever occurred to you that there's never a bad time to worship God? Amen. Never. Matter of fact, Psalm 118 verse 1 the psalmist said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good because His mercy endure forever yes. Psalm 118 verse 29 oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good yes. and his mercy endureth forever yes. Psalm 136 verse 1 oh give thanks unto the Lord let me get over here because it changed a little bit I want to read you how it runs here he said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Verse 2, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord God of gods, for His mercy endureth forever. Yeah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for His mercy endureth forever. Hey, God said it several times, about six, seven times in His Word. He didn't have to say it but once. We ought to get involved. Yeah. We ought to get to be a part of the program. Yeah. We ought to just thank Him. We ought to give Him glory. Yeah. We ought to bless His name for what? What he's doing and who he is oh my soul told you runways longer than a message they'd raise their hands and shout they said stay close to your guide stand your ground but they also said when it's possible submerge yourself in water now, I can't make this stuff up I mean, that's what they said if a lion attacks, you should submerge yourself in water. If there's a pond nearby or lake nearby, a river nearby, ocean, get in there and submerge yourself. You say, preacher, why is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, a lion is a fierce creature. They're experts when it comes to fighting. But they're scaredy cats when it comes to water. They will venture out maybe three foot into the water. But you get beyond that and just get good soaking in that water. They won't come and trouble you when you soak yourself in water. <laughs> Some of you getting it. Some of you ain't. That Bible you hold in your hand is water. Matter of fact, still water in the Bible refers to the Word of God. Right. Running water is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Those experts said, you just submerge yourself real good in that water. Yeah. Have I preached to y'all over here? <laughs> submerge yourself in water and get good and wet. Yeah. And when you do that, that devil, he may get out there and look at you and get in that water with you just to look, but he can't take much of it. Yeah. Yeah. He'll start backing up. Yeah. He can't handle that water. Yeah. He don't like water. Matter of fact, we used to have a cat. Now, he, we got him as a little kitty. But he loved water. But we got this other cat oh, not long ago, a year or so ago, and he got gone. Some, but you couldn't give him a bath if you tried to. He didn't even like getting his little paws wet. I'm going to tell you right now, when you and I take the water of God's Word, yeah. it is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing, even to the dividing the sun or the soul and the spirit yeah. and the joints and the marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When we take that Word, and we, hey, that's what the Lord fought him with. Yeah. Lord used it as a sword and a shield. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me, they said, stay with you guys. Said, stand your ground, raise your hands, and shout. 
as loud as possible. Submerge yourself in water. And then last of all, they said, now this is what the experts said. They said, if possible, seek shelter in a tree. If possible, you find you some shelter in a tree. See, a lion is intimidated by that tree. Oh, they'll jump up on it and try to get up there a little bit. But I tell you, the higher you get up that tree, the less likely they're going to come up and try and grab you. That's what the experts said. Now, I didn't write this down. I mean, I didn't make, I didn't make this up. And I'm going to tell you, some 2,000 years ago, on a lonely hillside called Calvary, oh, there was a tree. And on that tree was the blessed Lamb of God who gave His life, who shed His blood, who lay His life down so that you and I could have forgiveness of sin, be born again into the family of God. And listen, the devil thought he had him. The devil thought he had he had had control, of, and then three days later he got up. He said, "Look here, devil, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys to hell and death." Oh, listen, you don't have to die lost. You can get saved. Hey, listen, you can trust Jesus, be born again, and be a part of the family of God. All you've got to do is go to the tree, go to Calvary, to the one who shed his blood and gave his life for mine and your sin. I close with that. There was a missionary several years back. He went on a mission trip out in the jungles of Africa. And it was a three-day journey to get to the village where he'd be preaching. So some of the natives met him, and when he got off the plane, they would drive as far as they could and spend the night and get up and go again. Well, about the second day into that journey into the village, he said off in the distance, that missionary said, he could hear this lion roaring. And he was roaring real loud. And they said the closer they got to that roar, the louder it got. Finally, that missionary asked that guy, he said, what in the world's going on? Why in the world is that lion carrying on like that? Well, the guy said, come on and I'll show you why. And they went right to the edge of the trees. Pulled the brush back just a few hundred yards from where they had been camping. And just up under this tree was a male lion and a female lion. And that, that guy said that, Ain't that, ain't that something he had a guide with him? Yeah. I just thought about that. And that guide said, the reason that male lion is carrying on so, it, that male lion up under the tree, he's the one what roaring. He was bleeding profusely. He had been in a fight. I mean, he looked like he had been through it. How I many of you know what that means, just yeah. been through it? But he wasn't the one doing the line. The roaring set off about 100 yards. There was another line. And he was sitting out there. He just loud, roaring just as loud as he could roar to the very top of his lungs. He was acting up, carrying on, pawing the ground. And that missionary looked at God and said, What in the world? Why is that one way out there that don't have a mark on him? Why is he out there roaring and carrying on like that? Well, the guy told him, said, well, you see, that one up under the trees the one won the fight. He was all bloody. He had been battered. He had been through. He said, but he won the fight. He said, you see, they was fighting over that female lion, over that lioness. And he said, one thing about lions when it comes to mating, whoever they mate with, they mate forever. So that lion out there in the field, he was carrying on acting ugly, acting up, he knew he could never have that lioness, that female lion. Hey, I want to tell you, 2,000 years ago, 
uh, the Lord Jesus Christ lay his life down and he is the bridegroom and we are the bride and the devil knows once once we're saved he can't touch us he can't have us he can't get us so he's just out there roaring real loud he's acting ugly he's carrying on he's showing out but you remember this that's all he can do just act up act ugly show out and roar loud why? because we're protected by the line of the tribe of Judah oh when that line gets to roaring that line of the tribe of Judah show up and shut him down better be ready prepare yourself now you know how to survive a lion's attack stay close to the guy Stand your ground. Raise your hands and shout. Raise your hands. I ain't going to shout. We'll do a little calisthenics here. Raise your hands. Well, spiritual calisthenics. I help you. Yeah, get them up, everybody. There you go. Devil don't like that. Just raise your hands. Hey, I'm the one on live stream. My wife's watching me and my little girl right now. Lord, the world's he doing? I'm going to tell you this. Raise your hands and shout. And listen, when he sh- you can put them down. Unless you want to keep them up, don't matter to me. And when he attacks, whenever possible, submerge yourself in water. And then seek you a tree. Get up under that tree. Hide yourself. devil don't like you. I'm going to tell you, heads are bowed and eyes closed. Only way you can ever fight the onslaught of the devil is to know the Lord. To know the one that's able. The one that can change your life. Now, I don't know your heart. I don't know your need this morning, but I know... There's probably some here that don't know the Lord as Savior. I'd come give my life to him while I can't because you see, even though you're, you may be here not saved, the devil still loves to toy with you. If you want some help in this life and it be more abundant, have a real life, I'd come this morning and give my life to Jesus. You may be here and you're saved. I want you to be aware. Worship God. Trust Him. Allow Him to work during your, your life this week and in the weeks to come. And let's look for God to do great and mighty things which we know not. Preacher, I'm going to give it back to you. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.